Hello guys, welcome to another video of Pure Sim Gamer. Today I'm going to show you how to fly a uh, Boeing 747 from takeoff through navigation all the way to capturing the landing glide slope. Uh, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to do a short flight so that the video won't take too long. We are going to fly from Puerto Ventura, so I set it as the departure, to Lanzarote, so I set it as the arrival. Uh, we are going to do a low altitude airways IFR flight and we need an approach, so let's select an approach, an ILS approach, uh, ILS 03H. So uh, here we have our flight plan, that's the one that we are going to follow. Now there is, because it's a short flight, there is going to be a lot of information on a short notice. Uh, I would advise if you uh, do the flight for yourself in a Boeing Queen of the Skies, uh, do it on a longer uh, trajectory uh, so that you have all the time uh, to uh, effectuate the consecutive uh, steps. Now, if you learned something from this video, uh, please uh, give it a like. And if you want uh, videos almost on a daily basis from a Pure Sim Gamer, uh, then you are very welcome to subscribe. But without much ado, let's go and fly. Now, here we are on the runway ready for departure. Flying the Boeing is all about speed management and altitude management. Now to give you an idea, we have here the flight map. Uh, I'll put the control to plan, which is uh, all the way to the right. And by clicking alt gear, the right alt gear and uh, clicking on the screen, we got a big view of it. Now, uh, you can zoom out by uh, turning this knob and this will give you the complete flight plan. Now, uh, as you see, we are going to take off and then we are going to head to the first waypoint, second waypoint and third waypoint. Now, what we are interested in is the altitudes. So for that, you can click here on this button, turn on data info display. And immediately you see the altitudes that are expected at certain waypoints. Now, I can tell straight off that these are not realistic. We will not reach 20,000 feet uh, at LTE 35. So I keep that in mind and uh, I think we will uh, aim for 10,000, maybe 13,000 feet. Also, as we have to reach uh, 4,300 feet at the last waypoint to intercept the glide slope, um, that will be our main purpose for our altitude management, to reach 4,300 feet at uh, this LTE 17 uh, um, waypoint. Now, uh, let us take off. Um, the parking brake here is still engaged, so I can put throttle uh, forward so that I can reach the flaps. I think we need flaps of about 20%. And then we can disengage the parking brake and off we are for um, takeoff. Now we need to reach a speed of about 170 knots for takeoff. And that is what we are doing right now. V1. 165, 170. I think at 200 here, I pull back the yoke and we have a lift off. Now, first thing that I want to do is uh, retract the landing gear. Also, put the flaps back to about 5%. And then we engage autopilot. Autopilot is this button here. And you want to have lateral navigation. This means that the plane will follow the path on GPS. And if you also want to have the altitude automatically uh, done by the computer, engage GNAV. And now we are following the path, uh, the path of our uh, uh, flight plan. Let me see what uh, air traffic control um, has uh, talked about. So, uh, yeah, we acknowledge the handoff. Did you hear my last transmission? 
Let's acknowledge Going the handoff. Uh, I will try not to use ATC too much, so I will not tune to Canary Center uh, because um, we are concentrating mainly on uh, doing the flight plan um, as we intend to. So um, right now uh, we are uh, following the flight path. Uh, let me alt gear, click on it again. As you see, our airplane is this arrow here, right here, and we are going to turn and follow the path. Uh, to the left. Now, um, I clicked on VNAV, so normally uh, it will try to reach 20,000 feet, the vertical navigation. It will try to reach all the altitudes of our waypoints. Uh, but uh, in this case, to make it interesting, we are going to manage the altitude ourselves. So what we will do is, uh, let's say that we will uh, target an altitude of uh, 11,000 feet. So um, if you uh, look at this area of uh, the flight computer, we can turn the knob and put it, let's say, 10,000 feet. And uh, if you then uh, select a climb um, rates, you do that by clicking on vertical speed and scrolling to increment the climb rate and let's put it at uh, let's say 1,000, 2,000 uh, feet per minute. Now what will happen, the plane will uh, start climbing at 2,000 feet per minute until it reaches uh, 10,500 feet. That's how you do managed climb uh, rates. As you can see, we are at 3,600. We are climbing at 2,000 feet per minute and all the way up to 10,500 feet. I don't know if the distance that we can climb before we have to start descent is enough to reach 10,000 feet, but anyway, uh, as you can see, we are actually uh, climbing. We can actually put this even higher, so let's put it to um, 3,000 feet per minute climb rate, and immediately you can see that this angle here uh, where my mouse is uh, puts it to 3,000 feet per minute and uh, that's how we manage our altitude uh, without using the automatic VNAV. Now, we can also uh, manage our speed. Uh, actually, this is done uh, automatically now. To manage our speed, you have this knob here where you can put uh, the speed that you want to have. You can see that it's on 250 uh, knots. This uh, little uh, button here is um, on. This means that we have auto throttle uh, engaged. and the button uh, turn speed mode is on on because the light is on so it tries to maintain 250 uh, knots as you can see here on the left 250 knots now this can give an issue let's say that you would want to descend very quickly from 10,500 feet to 4,500 feet and you would do that by setting here a descent rate of uh, minus 3,000 uh, feet well uh, sometimes it will not reach that angle of minus 3,000 feet. Why? Because the plane tries to maintain 250 knots. And if you descend at a big angle, it would exceed 250 knots. In that case, you would have to disengage, disconnect the auto throttle by clicking this button. And then uh, you could uh, descend at any rate you want. Maybe this we will encounter that issue uh, later on. Let's see where we are on the flight plan. So uh, we are uh, heading to the second waypoint. Now, as I said, what is important uh, to uh, catch the ILS is that we um, reach 4,300 feet at this waypoint, LTE 17, because that's where we want to capture the glide slope and we have to be at around the right altitude. So we can already start preparing for that. Um, I will enter manually our altitude that we want at that point right now. 
So again, how do you do that? With this knob you set the designated altitude. I set it to 4300. Let me see again, what was it? Um, well, I can't see it, but it's about 4300. So 4300, uh, and then you have to again uh, adjust the vertical speed to reach that point. Currently we are at 10,000 feet. Uh, we have not that much distance to reach there, so we have to do quite some dive. So scrolling on this way of the button, I will do a descent of about 3,000, maybe even 4,000 feet per minute. Uh, now, you will see the problem that I mentioned earlier. It won't go to 4,000 feet per minute. Why? Because it doesn't want to exceed the 250 knots. So, let's disarm the auto throttle. And now it will really descend quickly, as you can see outside. We are descending at a steep angle. Now, as we are descending at a steep angle, our speed goes up. So you may want to use the speed brake at this point, uh, just to maintain a not too high uh, speed. So we are at 6,900 feet, we have to reach at the next waypoint, which is quite soon, uh, 4,300 about. As you can see here, we are almost at that waypoint, so that's why I did a steep dive uh, to reach 4,300 feet uh, at that waypoint. Now, uh, we are already uh, close to that uh, altitude, let's just continue. Now, uh, to stop the descent, it's important that we stop the, the, the process that we have here to reach 4,300 feet at a descent rate of 4,000 feet per minute. For that we will click uh, VNAV again once we are above 4,300 feet. VNAV will again automatically uh, do the altitude and will override our manual settings. So uh, we are about at 4,300 feet, so I'll click VNAV and you will see that the plane will start leveling off. Uh, it levels off uh, and stops uh, the steep descent. Now, at this point, we want to think about speed management. We are at 3,000 feet, that's much too high. So uh, I'll engage the auto uh, speed again here and um, click on this button and we'll put in a speed that we want of about 200, 200 uh, knots. Click on speed here and uh, this should um, reduce the speed to 2000. By this time I can stop the speed brake, uh, the plane will uh, manage the speed. As you can see the thrust goes automatically uh, to reduce the speed. Now uh, we are close to the runway and uh, we are at about 4000 feet. As you can see you have the indicator here already for the approach. Uh, we are also at less than 30 degrees angle to the runway. So at this point we will engage the localizer, which is our horizontal approach beacon uh, to the landing strip. And we will engage the approach button. Now the plane will start chasing the, um, this uh, little orange purple uh, carrot and will start descending automatically. <coughs> Sorry. All that is left to do now is manage the speed. So uh, we have to be uh, under, uh, well, at about 160 when we reach the runway. So I'll turn the speed knob to 160. 2500. Here we go. And uh, as we are going quite quick, quite fast, I'm also put the flaps already to full what I did right now, and to uh, help uh, reduce the speed, I'll engage again the speed brake. Meanwhile, we can also, um, well, soon enough, we will be able to uh, put down the landing gear. 
uh, let's just wait until we are under 200 degree, uh, 200 uh, knots of speed. So that should be about now. So as you can see, there's a lot to do if you want to fly the Boeing on such a short trip. So I would advise to do a longer trip so that you have more time to do uh, the consecutive steps uh, separately. Now we are reaching about 1060 knots. Uh, that's a good approach speed. Uh, the final thing that we want to do for landing is uh, take over from autopilot. As you can see, we are still uh, automatically descending following the glide slope. To take over from autopilot, we will disengage the autopilot with this big gray knot, uh, knob. And we also will um, disengage our managed speed because we want to be able to uh, idle the throttle. So I'll do this right now. I disengage the autopilot and I disengage uh, the auto throttle right here. And now I have full control of the plane. I can reduce uh, the speeds a little more and I can fly the final approach. So we are a bit low. And finally idling the throttle at approach. I'll idle the throttle right now. And all I have to do is to flare. 30, 20, 10. And we have a touchdown. I'll do reverse thrust braking. So that was it. I know it's a lot of information on a short notice. My advice would be to uh, do a flight with a longer distance to travel and uh, apply the principles. So just to recall, uh, with this knob you can set the altitude manually and you increase or decrease the vertical speed here. So this is increasing it, that's decreasing it. Uh, so you can set actually the climb or descent rate and the target uh, um, altitude. Now, if you are done with climbing or descending uh, before you reach uh, the designated altitude, hit VNAV and VNAV will automatically uh, stop your manual input from uh, the climb or descent uh, and target altitudes. That's one thing. Uh, the second thing that you have to remember is uh, if you are uh, ready to um, catch the glide slope, hit localizer and then after that hit approach. Uh, then it will start chasing uh, down the um, glide slope. And then finally, just before touchdown, disengage autopilot by clicking here and um, put off uh, auto throttle uh, by clicking on this button here so that you can completely manually uh, do the uh, tr tr throttle and um, landing at the end. So thank you for watching. I hope that you uh, learned something from this and uh, have a good flight. Bye bye.